This episode of Penpoint is brought to you by Gamefly. Uh, this is Pen. I'm in New York City doing a lot of uh, selling of the uh, of the bullshit show season eight uh, before I get back to Vegas. And I had a lot on my mind, so I wanted to do this. A lot happened in New York City. Uh, this I'm gonna, this story I'm going to tell is going to be a little bit um, uh, I'm going to be a little careful because the people involved are not going to give their names because uh, these people are risking a lot. And they're going through a hard time. I don't want to be part of it. But um, I want to make their hard time worse. But I've fallen in with a group. And I've talked about this before. My friend who is a formerly Orthodox Jew and who I took out for bacon cheeseburger and, uh, and uh, uh, clam chowder and shrimp and all this food that's trafe. He'd eaten kosher his whole life and he'd become an atheist. And he credits me, which is, of course, not true. But he credits my radio show with helping him. But of course, anybody who becomes an atheist, they're doing it in their heart and they're doing it from thinking. No one makes anybody an atheist. But he didn't say I made him. He just gives me a little bit of credit, more credit than I think I deserve. He's a wonderful man. And I came to New York City and he invited me out to a restaurant. There's this restaurant in Brooklyn that is amazingly cool. And look it up. They'll put a website here called Traif. The restaurant is called Traif. And it serves, not every dish is Traif. But none of it is kosher. None of it's blessed, of course. And it's like pulled pork sandwiches. There's also like um, bacon wrapped blue cheese and dates. And uh, the food is astonishingly good. It's a cool little place in uh, Williamsburg. It's Williamsburg, uh, Brooklyn. And uh, Trafe, it's really good. And go there. And I went there with my friend who was an Orthodox uh, Jew. And we were met there by these um, three men. There were also women there, but they weren't from this, who were Hasidic uh, Jews. They were brought up Hasidic Jews, and uh, they were all at various stages of uh, pulling away from that. Uh, I think the only word you could use is cult. Uh, one of them had like uh, hair curled back like Jerry Lee Lewis and sideburns and dressed uh, contemporary American. They're all men in their 20s, maybe 30. And one of them was, uh, uh, had kind of a little bit of payas here and was wearing a, you know, a hat that was almost like Justin Timberlake trendy, but also could be a, a cynic hat, you know, kind of halfway through and not wearing all black clothes, but dressed rather conservatively. And then the third one was full blown uh, a cynic Jew. He was uh, full payas, you know, tucked behind here, yarmulke and dressed in dark clothing. And they all had uh, heavy accents, very different from mine. And not Brooklyn, but more like, uh, well, I think Myron Cohen or Jackie Mason. I'm going to try to do a Jewish accent in New York City. I'm, in New York City. I'm not going to try that. No, I give up. Take that back. Uh, I can't do accents at all. Um, but I learned an incredible amount about people leaving this culture. There was a woman there who was doing a documentary on people who've left the Hasidic uh, culture. And becoming an atheist uh, when you're raised as a Jew, becoming an atheist when you're raised as uh, a Christian, like I was, is really simple. I mean, for uh, Christians, uh, general Christians are so understanding and so sweet and kind that my dad was a Christian until the day he died. And yet his son becoming an atheist, he did not love me any less. And it was impossible for him to uh, love me more. My, my parents' love for me was certainly love minus zero, no limit, as Bob Dylan would say. Very good relation with my parents, so that wouldn't affect. But these uh, Hasidic Jews, when they're leaving the church, when they're saying there's no God, um, they're leaving their whole life. They're leaving their wives, their children, uh, their parents, uncles, and there's an extended strong family. I mean, you can be very, very envious of the way the Hasidic Jews live and that they have their whole family around them. And it breaks my heart that my children see their aunts, you know, uh, one of them once a week, the one that lives in Vegas, but the other ones, you know, a couple times a year. And they see their grandparents. Of course, grandparents on my side are, are dead, uh, but uh, my, uh, my wife's parents are alive and they see them, you know, a few times a year. It's not enough. And this Hasidic culture has this beautiful thing and they're breaking out of it. And my heart goes out to them. 
And uh, if the family or the church or the synagogue, excuse me, or the schools find out that they've been, uh, that they're atheists now, their children will be punished, thrown out of school. Horrible situation. But the depths of my ignorance, and those of you who watch Penpoint regularly know that I have uh, incredible ignorance. Um, I did not know that there were people uh, born in the United States of America, born in the United States of America, who did not speak English uh, as a first or second language. Uh, one of these men I talked to, who was an Hasidic Jew, did no, was born in 1985. He was born in 1985 and he learned English in 2006. Born in 1985, learned English in 2006. His first language was Yiddish, his second language was Hebrew, his third language was American, English. He learned, see I tried to cheat that, I tried to make it think I didn't think that America was a language, but I actually thought that English was a language, you know, so I tried to slide that by you. Ah, oh, an asshole. Um, and uh, the first book one of them read, the first book they read, not the first book in English, the first book they read was uh, The God Delusion by uh, Richard Dawkins. And somehow this group of ex ascetic Jews have kind of glommed on to, uh, to some of the stuff I've written. Which is odd because I'm from, you know, Western Massachusetts and we had like, you know, as far as I knew in my school, two Jewish families in the whole town. I mean, there were obviously more than that, but, you know, there were two Jewish uh, children in my class. And uh, one of them all the Howard Johnson's where I worked. And uh, it was an amazing experience. I did not know there were subcultures that strong in the United States. And they also got... You know, no uh, teaching on evolution, virtually no math, virtually no science education. Uh, they get up uh, every morning and all the men bathe together in rainwater. And I guess for someone who has a regular uh, education of the world, this is not shocking stuff. It was amazingly shocking stuff for me. And I had a wonderful talk with them and I just wanted to take this opportunity when I'm in New York City and doing these pen points from New York City to just tell them that uh, the kind stuff they said to me about uh, listening to the stuff I do in the shows that I do uh, meant a lot to me. But I also wanted to take this opportunity and do just a, a couple minutes to just say, guys, you know, my heart is so with you. I know, I know I don't, I can't imagine how hard it is for you to have to um, deal with your family when, you're, when your intellect and your mind uh, tells you the truth that there's no God. And one of them said the most beautiful thing, uh, he said he was arguing with his father. His father said, you know, are you gonna be happier as an atheist? And he said, you know, dad, happy doesn't matter. It's the truth, there is no God. And the other one, the one who learned English in 2006, the one who works as a consultant for movies and TV on Hasidics, and that's why he's still in the whole drag. So we can still do those parts, plus we can get along with his family. Uh, he said that uh, when he realized there was no God, which started when he talked to a stripper, he went to a strip club, and a stripper dancing for him, and she said she was an atheist and believed in evolution. And he started arguing with her about, you know, which is more complicated, tomato or eyeglasses, and eyeglasses have to have a creator, and uh, how would you say tomatoes don't? And she argued. A stripper arguing with a Hasidic in a strip club, she argued for evolution. And from there he became an atheist and then said, once he was an atheist and there was no God, he said, who will take care of me? And it was heartbreaking and I just wanted to hug him and say, well, we all will, we'll all try. So this is just a shout out. I can't give their names, I can't, uh, I can't say any more about them. I don't want to make their lives worse than I already have. Uh, but I want to say, uh, I want to give, uh, just send my love out to the, uh, the guys at Trafe that I had dinner with and thank them again for, uh, for buying me dinner and for eating pulled pork sandwiches. And one of them pointed out that as I reached for the check and pulled out my credit card, one of the, uh, one of the other, uh, one of the other gentlemen grabbed the check away from me, fought me for the check and said, we're taking you out for dinner. And he said, here you are in Williamsburg, Brooklyn. You're a goy, and 
Hasidic Jews just fought you to pay the check. And I, I love the good-natured, uh, uh, good-natured ribbing of their culture that they had and the horrible position they're in. And the fact that people are born in the United States of America and uh, don't learn English. Uh, it's astonishing to me. So I haven't got a way to end this. There's no punchline. I just wanted to say uh, a lot of love to you guys and best of luck. And man, we're all with you. We're all with you. Gamefly. Gamefly is real easy to understand. It's just Netflix for games. I don't play games much. If I did this the way I would do it. Gamefly is the largest online video game rental service and offers you a choice from over 7,000 new and classic titles across all consoles and handhelds with plans starting at $15.95 a month. Cheap. Gamefly members can rent one to four games at a time and keep them for as long as they like. One to four games at a time. Just keep them as long as you like. I just said the same thing twice, acting like I was more conversational in my own words. I said the exact same thing. Okay, once you're done playing a game, send it back and Gamefly will send you the next available game on your list. It's Netflix for games. If you really like the game you're playing, simply click Keep It on the Gamefly website and the game is yours at a discounted price. Gamefly will even mail you the case and manuals free of charge. It's nice to get the manual, but really, you need all those online. That's why the rental thing works so well. <clears throat> Penpoint fans get a 15-day free trial when they go to Gamefly.com pen. There it is right there with my thumbprint. You can see my thumbprint that shows. Go to Gamefly.com slash pen for Penpoint and get 15 days free. This is Penpoint. I'm here in, uh, in, uh, in my little studio, in my little home at the Slammer. Benjamin. Uh, stick around, I'll show you a little bit about what we're going to be talking about the next episode of Penpoint. And I say to her, you know, uh, astrology is really first cousin to racism because it's judging people by how they were born and not by who they are.